This video is sponsored by JLCPCB. JLCPCB always think of customer convenience, for which JLCPCB has came up with SMT Assemble service. If you use SMT Assemble when you order your PCB, you can save your time and also get all the part you are using in your project 100% genuine and with perfect soldering. I think SMT service is a great option for your PCB. There is also more benefits such as 3D printing, variety of color of PCB, maximum 6 layer PCB and many more. So don't waste any more time, today upload your PCB and enjoy. This is SG3525 PWM generator IC. This is really very popular for commercial inverter. So that is why for more information I visit this SG3525 datasheet page. And here you can see everything is written on this datasheet about this IC. So according to this diagram, now I want to make a suitable circuit diagram to generate a 40 kHz beautiful PWM signal. And remember when you will make this kind of circuit diagram, so make sure you know everything about this IC because this will be easier when you will make this kind of circuit. And here you can see this is my final circuit. At first I connect my oscilloscope with it, then I set my power supply at 10 volt. And see here. A very suitable frequency is generated from this IC. But not in here, even you can control the duty cycle for more efficiency. This number one pin is for that. So here now we can control the duty cycle even frequency. Other hand, even you can shut down this IC with this 10 number pin with 01 command. Now for the amplitude the 40 kHz signal, here I am using 2 MOSFET as a push-pull circuit. And after that, for checking purpose, I want to make a tiny transformer. And here you can see this is my transformer core and I want to make this transformer with a 1 is to 5 ratio. And finally this is my transformer. So I mount this transformer on this breadboard. And after that, for the output DC, here I am using 4 ultra first diode. Remember, this is very important. Use an only ultra first diode. And obviously this is a DC coupling capacitor. Next I set my power supply to 10 volt. Now I want to measure the output voltage. Here you can see my output voltage is 56 DC. So this is a very good and very accurate for 1 is to 5 ratio. Even you know guys this is a very safe voltage for my experiment. Now one thing is left that is 50 hours SPWM output frequency for AC appliances. So that is why definitely we should have a great edge bridge right. The circuit diagram you will find in the description box. So I connect this edge bridge with this 56 volt DC. In order to generate SPWM frequency here, I am using Arduino. So very first I want to check it for PWM. So I connect a USB cable to it and upload PWM code. Here you can see my oscilloscope is showing me a nice PWM signal. But we know PWM signal is not great for all AC appliances that produce very humming. So that is why instead here I upload another code called modify sine wave. And see, this is a beautiful modify sine wave. But this is also not good some kind of AC appliances. So in the last I upload another code that's called SPWM. And finally here you can see very nice looking raw sine wave signal. And if I make some LC filter and this will be very great for any kind of AC appliances. So one thing is clear, our inverter is working very great with very good efficiency. So guys in this calculation, I want to make a very stable great inverter for myself. But my inverter will be different. So now I want to make a very cool inverter schematic for myself. In this schematic, I will add thermal protection, short circuit protection, current protection and even overload protection. So finally I complete my schematic. now. I want to convert this schematic into a great PCB. So here you can see this is my beautiful PCB. But now I want to order this PCB from our great JLC PCB website. It will take 7 days to arriving me. 
So during this time, let's create some Inverta code. So here you can see I already made so many version of code for this inverter because so many bug I faced during checking process. This is 0.5 version. This is quite stable version for this inverter. But in future, I will improve. Finally, I received this PCB. Here you can see I order 20 pieces. This time those are purple in color and see the PCB quality that you know absolutely great. So finally, now I want to assemble every component on this PCB. At first, the heart of this inverter is this Atmega 328P SMD chip. I solder on it. Next, for the first test, I upload the 0.1 code. And here, and here, the LCD indicate me everything is OK. So now, definitely I can mount the rest components on it. Remember, this is not important to necessary to make my inverter on this kind of PCB. You can make this inverter with Arduino and SG3525IC on the port I board. I using this PCB because looking great and it will be working perfect for a long time. This inverter's hex code you will find on my GitHub page. Just go and read the readme file and upload your favorite Arduino. In practical, this inverter has not necessary to attach a big heatsink. But for more safety, here I am using a heatsink. Now, just we need a big computer SMPS for yourself. And here you can see this is the main transformer. Just you have to use for 3.3 volt side and this transformer will produce 300 volt and this is enough volt for our inverter. So next I will mount this transformer on this PCB. Even solder every pin in a very beautiful way. After that I attach the ST7735 display to this PCB. For checking purpose I connect the DC power cable with this inverter board. Here I am using very thin wire but in your case you don't do that. Oh ho, I forget to attach this temperature sensor with this heatsink. So here you can see my inverter is ready. Now time to functionally check for this inverter. Ok, let's check this out. You can see I turned on this inverter. At first when you turn on this inverter you, you heard a long beep until the boot up. And after that if your voltage is very critically low like me then the beep is continue. Yeah, you can see my inverter is showing me battery voltage is 5 volt. That means this inverter is not turned on anymore. So that is why everything will be showing me zero. But MOSFET temperature will be showing me here 25 degree. Even the battery condition showing me here extremely low condition. Now I am increase my power supply voltage 5 to 12. And here you can see in my display battery voltage showing me 12. Even the current consuming showing me. With that, even how much watt will be generate, that also showing me. The output AC voltage, even the final MOSFET temperature. Even you can see here, the battery state is showing me fully battery. For the first load test, here I am going to use a 60 watt filament lamp. So I connect this lamp with this inverter. And see, my light is glowing very bright. Even the AC voltage is also stable. But the MOSFET temperature will be little increase. So don't worry about that because this system has thermal protection to cool this whole inverter. When the temperature will be 45 degrees, the fan automatically turn on. So overall here you can see everything is working very well. But uh, what about the induction fan? Okay, here I arrange a old 60 watt induction fan. I want to connect this inverter in this way. Next I turn on my inverter again. That means the power is ready. So I turn on this fan and here you go. See the fan is run very well as I expected. So as overall last I will tell you this inverter is a very successful project. At least for me. If you want to make it yourself like me then definitely you should. So guys this is today's short video. I hope you can learn something new from this video. If you don't like this video then definitely you can dislike it. And if you like it then please subscribe to my channel. See you in the next one.